Today is a very important special day in the company's history. Uh, today we get to launch Project Artisan, to launch the brand and tell you more about the product. And we also are going to show you some of the new content we've been working on over the last few months. You'll know that back in May at Perspectives, we said we were launching this new product, Project Artisan, but also said we were going to rebuild almost all of our content in business skills and leadership. We've taken a really different, innovative way to build this content. And today you're gonna to meet some of the cast that have been involved in it, see some of that content, and get to experience how we put it all together. So, as you can see, I'm standing in the middle of a green screen. And most of the content and a lot of our videos are shot in this studio on this green screen. You'll remember back in May, we said that we're going to use a brand new concept. And in some of that content that we showed you in May, we used a host, and you're gonna to get to meet some of our hosts today. Toby and Charlie are with me today. You're also going to see the cool new graphics that we use. So right over here is where the host will be based. You're gonna remember the host, and in each video, you're going to expect the host to introduce the video from this podium. And right behind me, just here, is where you're gonna see those cool graphics. And my favorite area, which is where we're going to have our set of actors role-playing and demoing exactly what it is we're trying to do with this concept and with this content, and that's just right over there. My favorite place, where our actors role-play the content and where they work through the scenarios and we get to see learning in action, in real live situations. We've opted for a very clean studio and a much more theatrical feel. This helps to ensure that the learner concentrates on the actors, the host, and the key messages, rather than thinking about how the office environment looks. So let's see the studio in action. In some of our courses, we have a panel discussion, and they take place here behind the Skillsoft desk. The monitor behind me is where subject matter experts talk to our host and the panel, giving their advice on a variety of topics. This panel set looks and feels a lot like our other studio, but allows for more interaction between a group of people and allows us to bring in all of our important subject matter experts. This is another important change in how we are using our subject matter experts. In the past, we often recorded the SME talking for a long period of time about theoretical situations and how to deal with them. Having the actors interact with the SME is a better setup for learning, retention, and a more compelling experience for the learner. Let's see one of these courses now. The vision thing is what leaders always seek from politicians to business people. Here's Robert Kaplan on why it's important. Everything you do as a leader flows from a clear vision with priorities. Uh, who we hire, who we fire, what markets we pursue, what clients we pursue, where we cut costs, where we invest, um, how I coach people, how I align the organization. Megan, Larry, and Lynn are three experienced managers who work hard to be leaders. Lynn, surely a company's vision is a given. I mean, what's so important about the way it's communicated? Let me answer that with a quote. Blood, sweat, and tears. Winston Churchill, right? He didn't just say, people, we need to win this war. He inspired his audience. He nailed it in three simple words. When you can get across a vision really well, you're not just laying out a plan, you're winning hearts and minds, you're inspiring loyalty, generating enthusiasm, and making people believe that by working hard, they're going to do something worthwhile. Welcome back. So that clip shows you the way we are using the studio. Now I'm delighted to introduce you to some of our characters. Let me introduce you to one of our hosts. Toby, welcome. Toby, you anchor these business concepts by introducing the topic and the characters. Tell me a little bit about that. Thank you, Bill. So what I do is I try to be the learner in the studio. I ask the questions that the learner would want to ask, and I make sure that the main learning is reiterated and reinforced, and difficult concepts are simplified. 
Well, we're delighted to have you as our host. You'll be hearing more from Toby later on, but for now, let's see Toby in action. Workplace politics are a reality, and even if you dislike them, you can't eliminate or totally ignore them. Many people in positions of power likely got there not just through their individual know-how, but because they know who's in power, how to appeal to them, and how to build coalitions of power and influence. In this course, you'll learn about how you can use political competence and business acumen to influence people and outcomes. Now I'd like to introduce you to Charlie, and she is our other host. Charlie, welcome. Thanks, Phil. I'm delighted to be here. Charlie, you're working with a different cast with a similar setup and a defined group of characters that people will get to know and recognize. Yes, it's great. We've been working together and it feels like a show rather than training. You get to know the various characters and it helps you to learn through scenario. By using a small group of characters in our courses, the learner gets to know their individual personalities, their strengths and their flaws. And all the time, the host brings the learner through the various scenarios, underlining the key messages. Congratulations on getting your project approved, Lauren. Oh, thanks. But now I feel overwhelmed. I've never tackled a project like this before, and I've no idea what to do next. What's your action plan? Action plan? What's that? It's like a project roadmap. It lets your team know what's expected of them. But I've never put together an action plan before. You just need to list what needs to be done, who needs to do it, how it needs to be done, and when it needs to be done by. The what, who, how, and when? Exactly. For instance, you know what the goal of the project is, right? Of course. It's to develop an app that allows customers to visualize the amount of solar energy at their disposal. <laughs> and you know who's responsible for what? Yep. I'm in charge of research, Julia's doing the design, Ashley's leading the development team, and Seth's got the marketing campaign. And you know how you'll all work together? Hmm. I think we'll work with our own teams, but come together for weekly meetings to share progress reports, brainstorm solutions, discuss next steps, that sort of thing. Good. And you know when it needs to be completed, right? Sure. It needs to be completed, user tested, and released by June 1st. Well then. Well what? You just drafted your very first action plan. That was it? There's a lot of details you need to fill in, but you're off to a great start. Wow, who knew? I better start writing it all down before I forget. Joining me now are the other characters from our shoot. The idea is that the learner will get to know the various characters and will remember who they are. First, let me introduce Seth. Seth, welcome. Tell us about your character. All right, well, uh, Seth, he's a departmental manager in the company, and he likes to make a lot of big plans, but he doesn't really follow through. Next to Seth, we have Lauren. Lauren, you're welcome. Tell us about Lauren. Hi, Bill. So my character is this super bubbly work colleague. She's always coming up with tons of new ideas and can be a bit over the top. Hi, Bill. I'm Julia. I'm helpful and reliable, but I'm also determined and ambitious. It all depends on the situation and who's involved. Thanks, guys. It's great to have you here. In this next clip, we're going to see Seth and Lauren differ in how they deal with an important meeting. Once you've created an action plan to achieve your business goal, it's time to use it to mobilize your team members to take action. Lauren's about to do just that. Thank you all for coming. I'm really excited to officially kick this project off. You all have your action plan, right? The question is, do we need it? An action plan can be very useful, Seth. Say you have a concern about some aspect of the project. Do you know who to contact? What if you need to catch me on my cell? Do you have my number? Of course not. I'm not a stalker. You keep pinning pictures of yourself on my bulletin board. I thought you said that was okay. Well, everyone's contact information is listed in the action plan, so if you have a concern... Why would I be concerned? Well, you might be worried about missing a review date for your campaign video. You do know when the first review date is, right? I'm pretty sure I have it jotted down here somewhere. All the crucial dates are listed in the action plan. Please review them carefully, and if at any time you feel like the dates might slip, please let me know. My dates don't slip. You haven't had a date since middle school. 
Lauren's doing great. She listed the deadline dates for the project in the plan, and she's stressed to the team the importance of informing her if there's any chance of slippage. Another crucial part of a good action plan is following up with team members regularly, using the plan as a check-in guide to make sure everything is still on track. Lastly, take an opportunity when sharing the plan to formally thank everyone for their commitment. And last but not least, our senior manager, Tom. Tom, you're welcome. Tell us about your character. Hi, Bill. I'm the senior manager in the courses. And basically, I'm a sounding board to all the other characters who are coming up with ideas, solutions, and trying to figure out a way forward. So let's see Tom and the other characters in one of the scenes from A Course Now. An employee with business acumen understands and can communicate effectively about the strategic, operational, and financial goals of their company. By demonstrating acumen, you can maximize your power and prestige at work. Lauren takes a step toward getting her project approved by demonstrating her business acumen in front of her CEO and colleagues. Financial. We're down another two and a half percent. Something drastic has to happen to turn things around. Anyway, what's on the agenda for today? My project's first. Well, actually, Tom, I'd like to add a new item to the agenda. Lauren's app proposal. Excellent. I'm always excited to hear Lauren's ideas. I was going to talk about my... <clears throat> I'd like to hear about Lauren's new app as well. Uh, thank you, Tom. At Town Hall, you said one of our goals was to help our customers recognize the untapped potential of solar energy. It's nice to know somebody was listening. Marketing clearly isn't. Well, I have an idea for an app that shows the amount of solar energy that homes soak up and the savings that customers could achieve by tapping into that. That sounds very high tech. It's very, uh, beam me up, Scotty. Well, <laughs> with this app, we'll be able to achieve our marketing goal, and it provides Ashley's team with mobile development experience, and it can increase our sales without increasing our marketing spend. Lauren is focusing on three key areas, strategy, operations, and finance. An organization's strategic position outlines where it plans to go in the future and what it intends to accomplish. The operational functions encompass the work and resources required to meet strategic goals. That includes processes, technology, and the people needed to execute the strategy. Financial metrics are used to determine business health and performance related to assets, liabilities, and profits. Seth's not looking too happy. Now wait a minute. How can you add on the resources for a new project without first increasing the marketing budget? Well, um, we could reassign the resources from your project. Tom? Hold on, Seth. Lauren addressed the strategic, operational, and financial benefits for her project. Why don't you set out similar benefits for yours? Benefits? Uh, well, there, there are a lot of benefits. There's benefits for... You? Tom? Tom might need more information before making a final call on Lauren's app. But by focusing on the strategic, operational, and financial benefits of her idea, she certainly put her project on the right track. By knowing how to communicate about issues in these key areas, you can increase your personal power at work too. I want to talk about the way we have treated the courses. The plan was to make shorter, more impactful topics that were no more than five minutes in length. In addition, we have between five and seven topics or videos for each course, so over 1,200 videos in total. There are several ways we are presenting the information. Where it is a complicated idea or concept, we have the host to set up the topic and we use our characters to play out the scenarios. Where we have a conceptual idea, we want to get across, we use 3D and 2D graphics with an upbeat voiceover and some background music to keep the learners interest. Let's look at an example of that now. For example, a decision about which features to include in the next release of a company's cell phone line may greatly impact the success of the phones. A third important area where operations managers make decisions is supply chain management. 
This involves managing, monitoring, and controlling all activities along the supply chain. It's about deciding how to guarantee the timely, cost-effective acquisition of inputs and delivery of outputs to customers. For example, you might need to decide which suppliers to use and how best to transport goods to retail outlets. A fourth area is quality management. This involves determining how to measure and maintain quality and how to identify and resolve quality problems. For example, you'll need to decide what to test to check the quality of a product or service. On a daily basis, operations managers make decisions that are key to the running of their organizations. Knowing what strategic areas to consider can make you more effective in your role and add to your organization's success. Finally, where we have simpler, people-based concepts, we are using character animation, which again brings them to life and makes it interesting and engaging for the learner. Let's look at one of these topics now. Do you ever put off doing tasks that you really should do right away? Do you find yourself playing solitaire when you should be writing a report or chatting at the water cooler instead of getting down to business on those first quarter results? If you do, you're not alone. This bad habit is called procrastination. Say you're a financial analyst for an insurance company and you're supposed to fact check the organization's financial results before they're published in two days time. You know that to get it done right, you'll need to work on it most of today and tomorrow. But you're a serial procrastinator, so you convince yourself that it would be better to start tomorrow morning when you're fresh and you relax by going for coffee with a coworker. You likely already know that your behavior will have consequences. The results won't be ready on time, and you may find yourself in deep trouble because of it. That's the most obvious consequence. When you waste time, things don't get done when they should. But there are other consequences too. You're probably often stressed and anxious, and your colleagues probably get frustrated with you. And the constant delays in your output cause problems for your company too. On the other hand, if you can manage to overcome that bad habit of procrastinating, you'll find that you'll reap several rewards from doing so.